Hey everyone, we're from Team Malaysia. I'm Sharaf. I'm Danae. I'm Max. I'm Saya. The countries hosting Olympic Games would be able to boost their local economy as there would be an increase in the overall tourism sector as individuals from all around the world will travel to the host country to watch the live games. It's also a great marketing strategy for the city. There will be an increased media presence and the city will get more well-known globally, leading to a long-term increase of tourism and helping the country to attract new investments. The countries hosting Olympic Games will also spend more on building infrastructure, infrastructure which increases the aggregate demand and creates long-lasting intangible benefits as the infrastructures have the potential to be used for many years in the future. For example, even more than a decade after the Olympics game, the Beijing National Stadium could attract 20,000 to 30,000 tourists. In addition to that, the Olympic Games can also create many job opportunities in the host country, such as construction workers and new staff for the stadium. This will result in a big boost in the economy, which can potentially lead to higher economic growth. Furthermore, as there will be an increase in demand for to watch the Olympic Games live from the host country, foreign media companies will pay for the rights to broadcast the Olympics, resulting in an injection into the local economy from the foreign sectors. This will ultimately lead to long-term benefits for the host country, as they will be able to reinvest their income to further research and development in other industries. In the future, if cities competing for the Olympics keep decreasing, then it will lead to a reduction in total Olympic spending. Hosting the Olympics have, has always been expensive, but recently it has become a, bit, a lot more expensive compared to the past Olympics. The previous five Summer Olympics and the recent Winter Olympics have resulted in the cost of the whole cities to be for more than $10 billion, with the 2008 Beijing Summer Games costing more than $45 billion and the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics costing more than $50 billion. Therefore, the number of cities competing for the Olympics keeps decreasing. Due to the pandemic, there is also a certain limit to the increase of tourism a country can receive from the Olympics. As the number of no normal tourists decreases, opting to stay away from Olympic congestion, high prices and security issues. When cities no longer claim for the spot and owner of hosting the Olympics, the Olympic spending will inevitably decrease as less and less people want to watch the games and the revenue will fall drastically. From the trend of falling viewership, it can be hypothesized that one of the factors is the demand for the Olympics decreases. Therefore, the price for watching the Olympics will have to decrease in order to attract more viewers, causing a lower equilibrium price. On top of that, the decrease in demand for Olympics will also cause a decrease in demand for Olympics related to related goods such as souvenirs, which causes excess supply and a fall in prices as producers are less willing to produce more of the goods, thereby reducing output. Based on the demand curve for an oligopoly market, if a firm cuts price, it would cause a big increase in demand and therefore would lead to a rise in revenue. The firm would also gain market share. However, other firms will not want to see their own fall in market share and so they will respond by also cutting prices to follow the first firm. Therefore, if all firms cut prices, the individual firm will only see a small increase in demand. If demand is inelastic and price falls, the revenue will also fall. We can analogize this to the wealthiest and most developed countries, each vying for the spot of hosting the Olympics, showing that the decline of the Olympics is inevitable as less and less countries want to host them. However, taking into account that the Olympic game can be seen as monopolistic market and IOC is the monopolist, we can use a model of monopoly to show when price is decreased. We have a loss in revenue from existing sales and an increase in revenue from new sales. The more sales that are made, the greater the loss. Overall, the demand for the Olympics is inelastic for a particular group of individuals, such as the family of the athletes, but they will still have to decrease the price in order to increase viewership. There could be several reasons why fewer people watch the Olympic Games. One of them could be the time difference between the host country and the countries where the Olympic Games are usually watched from. This could be one of the main reasons why the viewership of the Olympic Games has reduced in the recent times. For instance, the largest viewership of Olympics is the United States, and the most recent Olympics was held in Tokyo, where there is a very big difference between the time in between the US and the Tokyo, thus leading to a reduction in viewership. 
Additionally, TV audience have fallen over the years as consumers' behavior shifts to online and watching short clips. The presence of illegal streaming website online also uh, has also deprived the industry associated with Olympics from earning what is rightfully theirs. On top of that, more media companies also shift to streaming across different online platforms for some of the Olympic Games. But because it's rather fragmented, causing confusion for the audience to find a platform to watch the Olympics. Another reason is that less athletes are participating and less star quality because of the pandemic and the resulting delay. This could certainly result in a decrease in the viewership of the Olympics, as there will be less attraction and incentives to watch for the fans of those athletes. Moreover, back in the days when the viewership was high, when there was high exposure and discussion, people tend to watch the Olympics because other people watch it. There is a reduction in this bandwagon effect, which was there previously which is why fewer individuals tune in to watch the Olympic Games live. Furthermore, the determinants of demand can, can adversely affect Olympic viewerships. Factors such as price, expect, uh, price expectation, income, taste and preference, substitute price of complementary good, number of consumers can influence this. For example, people who like sports will want to watch the Olympics. The theory of consumer choice suggests that the purchasing patterns of the consumers are influenced by several aspects, such as diminishing marginal utility, which means that every additional consumption of a product leads to a lower utility. In this case, the utility that viewers derive from watching each Olympic Games diminishes. Since rational audience choice is decided by the concept of utility maximization, the number of audience watching the Olympics reduces over time. There are several reasons behind the current difficulties that the Olympic Games are facing. However, there are solutions that we would like to suggest to the IOC to make the Olympic Games more sustainable. Firstly, one of the main difficulties is that less countries are willing and wishing to host the Olympics. The high costs of the Olympic Games may not be covered by revenue, which will create debts in the host country. In addition to that, the countries may undergo an economic recession after holding the Olympic Games, which is referred to as a post-Olympic Valley effect due to the budget deficit, huge losses, unused infrastructures, and maintenance costs of them. As a result, less countries are willing to host the Olympics with the concerns about the Valley effect. Furthermore, the infrastructure and facilities built for the Olympic Games have a tendency to be left unused after the Olympics, which would lead to a significant loss as it, would as it took huge resources and land in the country but failed to provide any long-lasting benefits. It also had several big opportunity costs such as possible schools, hospitals and offices which could have been built instead of the stadiums. Lastly, due to the change in the consumer behavior mentioned before and the significant widespread of the COVID-19 pandemic, there is less revenue generated from the Olympics as a sequence of less viewership, ticket sales and tourism. There are three solutions that we propose to cope with the difficulties and to make the Olympics more sustainable. The primary solution is to have one or more permanent host cities which will hold the Olympic Games, which means that the infrastructure built for the Olympics can be reused for the future Olympic Games. The main present concern with the Olympic Games is the massive amount of money spent on new development in one area for one event. Even spending on new transportation infrastructure is frequently directed away from people's long-term requirements instead focusing on serving tourists solely for the duration of the Olympics, with little regard for the demands of the taxpayers who eventually foot the price. In the long run, this solution solves the problem of unused infrastructure and changes the infrastructure cost into a permanent fixed cost for the future Olympics, allowing the host countries to spread the fixed cost over a large revenue base generated and thus earning more profit, which motivates the countries to host the Olympics. Secondly, in order to solve the problem of unused infrastructure and facilities built for the Olympic Games and the problem with low revenue, we could instead introduce a longer period of the Olympics incorporating both the Winter Olympics and Paralympics. The time period could range around one year. This would allow the host countries to take advantage of infrastructure and facilities that have been previously built as they will be used for a way longer period of time, utilizing the resources and land used to the maximum. This can also attract tourists to the host countries throughout the entire year instead of just a short period of time, but also encourages the tourists, isolates and staff to stay a much longer period in the country. Therefore, 
resulting in more injection from the foreign sector into the local economy. Different types of competitions can take place in different months so that each month will attract a certain number of audience and tourists. This can also prevent an overlap of competition so that the audience won't need to take the opportunity cost when deciding between which game to watch live. Thirdly, the IOC could change the form of Olympics into an Olympics World Tour, which allows different countries to host, to host country-specific sport, sports in cities across the world. They can also take this chance to add more sports that require a specific environment like surfing. This would also give the Olympic Games an opportunity to be held in the countries where specific sports are famous. For example, football matches being held in European country. Overall, holding events in existing venues across the world will allow the Olympics to take use of some of the world's most iconic locations, while reducing the cost of development and disruption to the host cities. Furthermore, the cost of host Olympics will be split onto different countries, so that each will have less economic burden. Lastly, holding spots where a fan base already exists will also drive up ticket sales for the Games and increase the total revenues to cover the cost. In conclusion, all the solutions discussed will help to improve the current state of Olympics and they will benefit the Olympic Games in both the long run and short run. This is why our solutions are relevant and will assist the Olympic Games in the upcoming years. Thank you for listening.